Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Crowded Booth. My name is Bryce Kuhn, the host here as uh, we get ready to go inside the booth, a new series here on our channel where we talk with coaches, media, and players as well. And our first guest is going to be none other than Mike Jacobs, the new head coach over at Mercer University there in Macon, Georgia, taking the reins from a program that uh, lost the eventual national champions this past season is looking to continue uh, their nice little run. They've gone on the past couple of years over there in the SoCon. So without further ado, Mike Jacobs. All right, we welcome you back here inside the booth. Bryce Kuhn alongside Mike Jacobs, the new head man over at Mercer. And uh, Coach, I got a chance to watch your your press conference, had to go back and rewatch it. First off, let's just talk about this right now, a little soft toss question. Have you nailed down a favorite place to eat there in downtown Macon yet? Oh, there's there's a bunch of them. Uh uh, I'm uh, I'm a sucker for ice cream, so so the milkshakes at the Rookery have been, uh, you know, maybe once a week since I've been in town. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, look, Coach, let's uh, well, let's kind of dive in here because uh, you know, Mercer's a program that has seen success uh, to heights they had not seen before over the past three, four, five years. I'm so sure that's something that you were able to get a glimpse of from afar when you were at Lenore Ryan. Let's let's cut to the chase here. When this search started and and that initial contact was made, what made this program attractive to you and set a place that you think uh, you can take to to even better heights? Yeah, I mean Lenore Ryan's really a special job. It was going to take something. I mean, I didn't take interviews, didn't take calls on a number of things this off season, just because um, we were really happy with where we were at. Um, it was going to take something special, something that I thought where, you know, the first thing I look at when I look at any job is, you know, what is the commitment level of the institution? And, you know, it became pretty evident early on in the process, um, which was a quick process that, you know, Dr. Underwood and Jim Cole and the athletic department and the school itself um, are, are all in on making sure football is you know, relevant, not just in the SOCOM, but at the national level. And, you know, oftentimes when you get a chance to, to move up a division or to take over a program, you know, you're a complete tear down rebuild. And the fact that this was a, you know, a second round FCS playoff team that, that you know, really you look at the losses um, to, to three other playoff teams and, and the eventual national champion and Ole Miss who won the Peach Bowl. So mm-hmm. um, this is a what I felt was a pretty healthy roster with an administration that, um, is committed at the highest level, and that that's really what intrigued me the most about it. You mentioned growth potential in that press conference. I know that's something that Mercer fans are excited to see. And look, uh, you know they, they want to see that obviously as soon as possible. When you look at this roster, when you look at the the financial commitment to to the upgrades at that five star stadium, and when you look at all these different things, was that something too that kind of stuck out? That you know said, hey, they're not content with just being where they are from that, like you mentioned, that, that administrative standpoint of being committed to this program. Sure. I mean, you know, we're, we just announced shortly after I was hired They're you know, they're doing the end zone renovation, which will have uh, some outdoor seating, a beer garden. We'll have some field level um, tailgate tents for lack of a better term. That'll be, that'll be able to be, you know, almost like a luxury box on the field with, with food and beverage uh, we'll get new turf here as uh, soon as soon as our mega camps are done. And so, uh, you know, j- just little things like that. And, and they don't want to stop again. The, mm-hmm. You know, it's it's uh, you know, what's the program since 2013? I think it came back maybe. And so, you know, going into year 11 now um, to already be making significant improvements to things that are already pretty darn nice, um, you know, says a lot about what they the direction that they wanted to go. Obviously, folks are able to kind of read the, the bio on, on you and where you came from and everything like that. But kind of walk us through. I mean, this 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 might be a loaded question, but but what's your why? What why why do you coach football? What is what makes this this job special to you? And especially day and age, like we were joking before, this there's no such thing as an off season. This is a 365 day year round job. Yeah, I you know I I'm the son of a coach, as I mentioned. My dad was a Division One guy for. 38 years he uh you know he had the unique experience he was on Don Nealon's staff at West Virginia for 15 seasons so um you know I, I really got to see it but more than anything I got to feel like th- those guys and the relationship and the way they viewed my dad um as a mentor as somebody they trusted 
as somebody they really looked up to, I, I was just naturally drawn to it at a very young age. And, um, you know, it's really kind of all I've ever wanted to do, you know, and um, I knew you had to go the GA route, right? The, the, the world of navigating entrance into this business has changed uh, almost as much as the, the transfer stuff, but knew I had a GA and knew that's what I wanted to do right away. And was fortunate really pretty much right after I got done playing, uh, had an opportunity uh, to go to Eastern Michigan as a graduate assistant and really begin my career. You'd love to hear that. Obviously, a lot of different trees that, that coaches come from and everything that much. Talk about the ever-changing landscape of college football. I mean, it's something that I think coaches, uh, media members are, are covering differently. Coaches are dealing with, support staffers are dealing with differently. You mentioned relationships. That, that's a key factor. It's something your dad was really, really high on. How much are you seeing this sport just change and relationships becoming even more of a factor maybe than they were five, ten years ago with this like I said, ever-changing landscape of college football. Yeah, I I think it's harder, right? Relate. I mean, you think about like a dating relationship, right? Like it it grows over time, and when we're in an instant gratification world, it's hard to develop the depth of relationship you need, um, you know, to garner the trust. I think that's imperative to for for it to be mutually beneficial, and so you know, more now than ever, you got to be really diligent. You got to be on top of it and you got to work hard to develop it, you know, as early as you can in the process. And then, you know, where it's really changed with the portal is you, you got to stay on it, right? Like mm-hmm. you can't, you can't let it go by the wayside, right? Like you, you gotta, you gotta nurture it and you got to keep pouring into kids and people and, and, and really communicate at a high level. Within the SOCON, there's obviously a high academic prestige amongst all these programs, as well as the past couple of years. I mean, two, three, four teams vying for an at-large bid at the end of every single season. As Mercer kind of enters this new era under you, what is maybe two, three characteristics or qualities that Mercer fans are going to see and that you want this team to embody uh, of a Mike Jacobs-led football program? Yeah, I, first of all, as, as I mentioned before, man, right, like I'm an offensive line guy, so like high, high value at the line of scrimmage from a recruiting standpoint, both offensive line-wise and defensive line-wise, right? Like, um, you know, we got an upfront view of what the national champion looked like and, and, and the size and some of those things at South Dakota State. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're, we're – we're, putting high value on the line of scrimmage. I, I, I value running the football and stopping the run. You know, it sets up big play action pass plays. Um, it makes defense or, you know, forces offense to be one dimensional. So, so uh, a high value on the line of scrimmage and hopefully a physicality and a toughness. Um, I want our teams, I want people to watch us and say, not only are we tough and physical, but we're highly disciplined, right? We don't want a bunch of pre-snap penalties and things that, that good teams don't do, which is hurt themselves. And then finally, I want people to see our kids having fun, right? Like we work too hard at this to be like emotionless robots, man. Like we, we need to get out there. We need to have fun. We need to make sure we're energetic and understand just how blessed we are to one, be where we're at and two, uh, get to play the game we love with people we love to do it with. Last one for you, Coach, here as we wrap this one up. Obviously, you know, you have a chance here at an FCS head coaching job, a job that the previous head coach was able to to continue to move up. And Mercer's a program that many people are taking notice at the FCS level with that recent run they made in 2023. What would you go back and tell, though? Let's go 22, 25-year-old Mike Jacobs about this career arc and this journey. What what, what are some of maybe the tidbits, the advice uh, that you would go back and give as you kind of look back at what helped you get here, the support, the, the, the folks that, you know, surrounded you uh, as you embarked on this journey? Sure. I, you know, 20, 22-year-old me who took my first job at Eastern Michigan, I, you know, I never thought I wouldn't, you know, I never thought the division two portion of my journey would be as, as long and as meaningful as it was to be really honest, right? Like mm. play high in football at, at Ohio state. I, I grew up around it, thought that's what I'd be really all I ever thought I wanted to do was be an offensive line coach in an elite level. And, um, you know, God's timing's funny. Right. And, and it led me to, to the division two world for what, 12 or 13 years, almost, 
you know, more than half of my career now and just really found a niche, right? Like to stay patient, to work hard, to be, you know, to be where your boots are, so to say. And, uh, you know, the reason I'm here is because I've, I've been able to one, attract really good football players and their families and create buy-in, but also just hire really good coaches that are, that are fantastic teachers. And, um, you know, they help make me look good at the end of the day. And, um, you know, I think just the patience part and, and what I would recommend to young coaches is, is to, you know, don't, don't snub your nose. Don't, don't turn your nose up at any job because there's no, there's no greater value than actually coaching right in this day and age where there's, you know, listen, in 2005, which wasn't that long ago, there was one defensive GA, one offensive GA, and that was it in the big 10, right? I was working for Joe Tiller in the big 10. I was still cutting out, pictures from a media guide and putting it Joe loved like the old school hit board. And I mean, <laughs> that's not that long ago. Right. And now, now these guys got staffs of 55, 60 people. And sometimes coaches, they, they get too tied up in what the polo is, the logo on the polo is instead of going to work, like go coach, go on the road and recruit and, and learn how to do it at a high level. And there's no greater experience in doing and actually doing the job. That's awesome. That's awesome. Coach Mike Jacobs, the new man, has only been on the job. What now? For a week and a half where we're sitting right now, officially? Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm like two weeks in now. I'm, I'm two full <laughs> weeks in, but it's uh, it's flying by, I can tell you that. That's awesome. Spring ball, uh, not too far away, and then obviously get into summer workouts and then fall camp and right into another football season. Mike, we appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, uh, share a little bit of your story, and best of luck to you and the Mercer Bears this upcoming fall. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on, Bryce. Thank you. Go Bears. Well, we appreciate Mike Jacobs and uh, that conversation. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you did, make sure to follow, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe to the channel as we have more conversations just like this with coaches, players, media, and more right here on the Crowded Booth. This has been the first installment of Inside the Booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coons.